Good morning, everybody. I'm so happy you're here again today. Today, we're going to finish our story about Daniel and the lion's den. Remember, we've been working on that other version of the story from this book called My Bible Friends. And remember, I had told you that I had these at my house, and they were mine from when I was a little girl. And I remember listening to these stories. So yesterday, we talked about the princes who were angry that Daniel had been given this very powerful position uh, next to the Pharaoh. And they came up with this idea that everyone should worship the king for 30 days. And they knew that Daniel was not going to do it. So yesterday, we left off where um, messengers had let the people know that this was the new law. And today, we're going to go over the things that happened after. Okay? Now, remember, I'm going to read, and then I'll show you the pictures, because there's quite a bit of words, and it's a little tricky. Okay? All right. Several of the princes hurried down the street that led to Daniel's house. They hid where they could see the window that he always opened when he prayed. They saw Daniel come home and go into the house. Would Daniel open his window and pray as he always did? Perhaps he would pray in his closet today. Maybe he wouldn't pray at all. Maybe he wouldn't pray at all until the 30 days were passed. Anxiously, the princes watched and waited. So there they are. See them hiding? And there's Daniel going towards his house. And that would be my dog being very loud. And then... Daniel's window opened wide. The princes saw Daniel kneel in the open window. They heard him pray to the God of heaven. They didn't wait for Daniel to say amen. They raced to tell the other princes what they had seen and heard. Together, they would go tell the king. Their plan had worked. Daniel would be thrown into the lion's den, and they would be rid of him. These are not nice men, are they? So look, here's Daniel. Now remember, God has been working with Daniel since he was a very little boy to make those good choices. And Daniel is choosing to follow the one true God. And look down here, do you see the princes? They can't wait. It's almost like they're going to tattle, isn't it? The king was so sad. His friend was Daniel. He was so sorry that he had put his seal on the law. Guards brought Daniel into, or to, not into, but to the lion's den. Other guards rolled away the stone from the opening to the den. The lions were hungry and growled. They roared so loudly, the ground trembled. One guard seized Daniel's arm, another his feet. They threw him down among the roaring lions and then rolled the stone back into place. So I want you to look at this picture because I think it's a really um, interesting. So see, this was the opening to the den. Um, it was like an underground cave. So it would be very hard for someone to get in and out. They would have to throw someone in. Um, and there's no ladder or anything for him to get out. So here's Daniel. And there's the guards. And you can see the king. He's not standing like he's very happy, is he? And then look back here, you can see the princess. And if you look at this one's face, he's kind of like, ha, ha, ha. They were not nice men. Everything became quiet. The lions no longer roared. The ground no longer trembled. 
The proud princes smiled at one another. They were rid of Daniel. They were sure they would never see him again. But the king wept. Do you guys know what wept means? It means he cried. The king was so sad that this had happened. So look, here are the princes. They're very happy. But look, you can tell that the king is not happy. You see? Day turned into night. The moon came up. Hundreds and hundreds of stars sparkled in the dark night sky. But the king couldn't sleep. He refused to eat. He would allow no music to be played. From time to time, he listened toward the window. Often on other nights, the lions roared. But tonight, the lions were quiet. The next morning, as soon as the sky began to come light, the king sent for his guards and hurried to the lion's den. The guard rolled away the heavy stone. Anxiously, the king called down into the den, Oh, Daniel, it's my God, whom thou stewardest able to deliver thee from the lion. Did Daniel answer? Was he still alive? I bet the king was so nervous and I bet he was just so filled with worry and fear. There he is calling down into the lion's den. We know what happens, don't we? Yep, we do. From down in the lion's den came Daniel's quiet voice. Oh, king. Live for others. My God hath sent an angel and hath shut the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me. I love this picture. Now, I've never seen an angel, but I imagine that angels look very like that. And you can see that the lions almost look like they're friendly. Now, that's not really how it is. But when Daniel got thrown into the lions, then that's what God did. He made those lions close their mouths and not be hungry. And he protected Daniel. With joy, the king ordered the guards to take Daniel up out of the lions' den. Now, remember, there was no ladder. So I'll show you in the picture how they might have done it. Again, we don't know for sure, but this might be the way they did it. The guards let down a rope to Daniel. Hardly was Daniel out of the den when the lions began to roar and the ground began to tremble. But there wasn't a tear in Daniel's clothes. There wasn't a claw mark on his hands. There wasn't a scratch on his face. So look. And they had to use rope and they probably tied the rope around Daniel's waist and then pulled him back up until he got to that point and they could get him all the way out. Remember, Daniel had no marks of any kind on him. That's what's really cool about this story. Even as God sent angels long ago to protect, to shut, ugh, Excuse me, let me try that again. Even as God sent an angel long ago to shut the lion's mouth, to keep them from hurting Daniel, he has promised to send angels today to protect everyone who loves him. Now, I want to tell you how much I love that story right now because God protected Daniel just like he protects all of us. And I am so thankful that our God is helping us in all of this kind of crazy world right now. And he's protecting us just like he protected Daniel. I love it. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for another day. Thank you that 
we can trust you just as Daniel trusted you. Thank you for helping us to make good choices and for helping us to remember to believe in you. Please be with us throughout the day. Protect us and help us remember that you are with us always. We love you, Jesus. In your name, amen. All right, guys. I'll see you in a little bit. We'll do some calendar activities. And I have a nice new read aloud for you. See you soon.